Hi, this is James O'Keefe. Uh, I'm captain of the Massachusetts Pirate Party, and um, I'm joined today by Eli and Joe. How are the two of you? I can't complain whatsoever. I mean, I can. There, there are people trying to pull shenanigans everywhere. However, uh, my personal domain is just fantastic. Excellent. You, Eli? Uh, I'm doing okay, too. Wonderful. How are you, Jamie? I am okay. I'm I'm looking forward to uh, some relaxing time soon. So, you know, get to enjoy the summer. Um, as it starts getting not hot, which is even better. Um, <clears throat> unless I go to the beach. So, a um, couple of things. Uh, we have two events we're going to be uh, hopefully at September seventh. Uh, we will. We're planning to be at Worcester at the Worcester Pride Festival, and then uh, I believe it's October nineteenth and twentieth. Uh, we're planning to be have a table at the Anarchist Book Fair. So if those are events you would like to help us with, by all means, check the description below. And there'll be information, there'll be links that you can go and sign up. <clears throat> we have three topics today, um, all of which, interestingly enough, are somehow copyright related. Um, we are a pirate party, after all. Uh, the first one, <clears throat> excuse me, comes to us via Ars Technica uh, with the title ISP to Supreme Court. We shouldn't have to disconnect users accused of piracy. So uh, Cox Communications has had a long time, has been sued. Uh, it, the case first started in 2018 by Sony and other uh, music copyright holders. Um, there was a judgment where Cox had to go and pay a billion dollars to these companies because, uh, you know, selling music apparently is just not sufficient. They need to go shake down uh, ISPs that are just shuttling bits from one place to another. And so, <clears throat> um, and they're trying to get Cox to shut down users um, who pirate, basically. Uh, this was something that uh, 10 years ago they were trying to do trying to get the government to do, and thankfully that went nowhere. So they're trying to take legal action uh, against ISPs. So Cox is appealing it. <clears throat> um, and the judge ruled that they have to have a new trial about the billion dollars. Uh, so likely that amount of money will end up going down. But Cox is still saying they shouldn't have to go and cut people off. Uh, you know, after all, we know ISPs have, there, there's so few ISPs in any particular municipality. Uh, so if you get cut off by Cox, you may very well end up, end up not having access to the internet. Um, certainly fast access. <clears throat> uh, and so, you know, they're actually fighting for their users. So thoughts? Well, oh, I mean, he, here's the question. How is an ISP supposed to know which person is doing illicit things and which person's not? There'd be so much information going over their networks that how would they even begin to fathom to track what's legal, what's not legal, what's, you know, and on top of that, where is the due process? Are we just throwing out the fourth, right? Just like, you know what? These people do things. We accuse them of such. Burn them. You know, so th those are my two main questions. Like, how, how can you, one, prove it, that this little bit of information is legitimate or not legitimate? And how to even begin to track that? And two, w they just accuse this is pirated, so automatically that's the case? Um, that is interestingly enough what Cox's uh, arguments is that they have ISPs have no way to verify copyright notices to know that 
you know, if Sony contacts them and says this person has infringed, has copied our movies or music too many times, you need to remove them. It's like, how do they, they have no way of validating that users have rights too. Yeah. I mean that in us as pirates believe that the internet is a human right. So we would definitely take Cox's side on this one. So that's my two cents. Um, that gets us to our next uh, article, which is uh, back in uh, 2000, uh, 2009, uh, Radiohead, which is a band uh, who has been supportive of file sharing and has said in the past the file sharing should be legal, um, went and took one of their own songs that they were putting out an album and they leaked it themselves and, and put it out there for people to pirate. They had a, uh, in the past they've had, uh, they've had pay what you want systems set up so that people can give them more or give them less than the normal price. Um, but their back catalog was sold to uh, XL Recordings, which strangely enough is part of Beggars Group Digital. And Beggars Group Digital has compiled a list of uh, links that they say are infringing and they've gone to Google. There's been 9,600 links. Um, and they've said to Google, you need to remove these from search results so that people can't find them. Interestingly enough, Google looked at that. Now that's across 1,643 domains. And Google found that only 4.5% were infringing. So 95.5% of the links were not actually infringing. Uh, and of course, one of the various articles, this comes to us from Torrent Freak, um, was a Torrent Freak article. Uh, can I just make one small correction? We don't know exactly who leaked it. It could have been somebody associated with them. It could have been them. Uh, we don't know exactly who leaked it in 2009, but we know that the band is totally okay with it. Thank you for that correction. You know. So... Yeah, we just we don't want to throw out random accusations and um but for the fact of the matter is I don't think they care. And they think that music should be something that's shared and and given to all. And we fully agree. I think music is part of the cultural um should be in the cultural domain. It's most musicians agree that music is meant there's only so many chords that you can play so music is something that you build upon and share and it evolves and um i think that's what really radiohead was getting at and the copyright trolls copyright is the death in, of innovation so we can't move forward with music if music is just locked down you know it's part of the social contract so Thanks for those thoughts. What do you think, Eli? Uh, Joe said pretty much exactly what I was going to say. So, um, oh, you're too fast. <laughs> Thanks, Eli. Sorry about that. I, you know. <laughs> um, the the one you know, interestingly enough, getting back to the ISP, if if a rights holder went to Google and said, "Here are 9,600 links." And Google found that only 4.5% of them actually, uh, for only 4.5% of those links were actual infringing content, then Cox certainly has a valid point where it, it could very well, because it cannot go and validate it, there's no hindrance to, uh, to Sony or other rights holders going and saying this person infringed when in fact they didn't and Cox has no way of determining whether that's true or not. Um, you could have potentially thousands or more people who were, you know, 
removed from the internet and accused of, uh, you know, sharing sharing files they shouldn't have, uh, with no ability to challenge that. Um, so, Joe, you had our last article. Yeah. So um, there was one on some a little bit of corporate greed that kind of falls into this. And it actually has to do with um, a Suvade cooker where they wanted to start. This comes from Ars Technica. And so a 10-year-old companion app, like this cooker's been out forever. If you don't know what that is, Suze is French for under and Vada is for vacuum. So it's a vacuum-sealed cooker. And what it does is you put it in the water and then you set the app to what temperature you want to cook it at, and it cooks it to that. You know, kind of like the same way that your hot tub cooks you to a certain temperature that you like so much. Um, basically the same thing, but for your food. Um, I'm sure the temperatures are similar. But, you know, probably with less streamy action, or the water jet action. But essentially what it does is it cooks your food, and they want to start charging $2 a month just to have the app, you know, when you could just get a thermometer and and cook it yourself at the right temperature, you know, just saying. But it's it's another thing where corporate greed is trying to win again, and they're trying to take something that you already have owned, probably for 10 years now if you're a professional cook, and they're trying to extort money out of you. So I hope that they don't win this one. Um, I hope that there's some hack or some break or some unlocking of said program. I mean, we do in Massachusetts, we did win some battles of right to repair. And so it'd be very easy to find a, uh, an app in order to just use that software without having to pay. Just saying. You could learn to code it yourself. That would not be a bad idea. Which reminds me, are, are we associated with any hackathons? I think we should become associated with hackathons. Hackathons are a wonderful thing, especially in the digital rights movement. Uh, besides Boston in Somerville, I think is going to be in October. We oh. should be a sponsor. We should be a sponsor. Cool. Google in the pirate party. <laughs> well, that being said, um, that's all we really had for today. But, you know, copyright is an important part of them trying to troll us and the powers that be extort even more money out of us. So we need to fight back. So we would definitely love to have your support by you giving us the thumbs up for that, that algorithm, those comments which we do actually read and you know, you can be a part of the pirate nation where we try and take back the government and bring some sanity back into the politics, you know, with some just logical fact-based scientific approach to politics. So definitely join us. We, we have an awesome information network and we support privacy for all. So definitely become a part of the pirate movement and do your part.